Lord, help us remember that as Christians we are devoted openly to you. The sacrament of baptism is a reminder to all of us that we have received and all that we, that we ask to give. Help us who have received so freely from you to give as freely in return and to have the pleasure of giving as well as receiving. Amen. Please be seated. The first scripture today is from 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 11 through 13. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered, but he is tending to the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent and had him brought in. He was ruddy with a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. He is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. Samuel then went to Ramah. The next scripture is from Luke 3, verses 15 through 17 and 21 through 22. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Christ. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one more powerful than I will come. The thongs of those sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into the barn but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable, unquenchable fire. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from the heaven, You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you very much, Karen. These passages were selected because, depending on your particular tradition, I'm not sure the Greek Orthodox are doing it, but it seems to me the Roman Church, and certainly ours as well, this, was, this would be Baptism Sunday. Okay. And uh, although in our, our liturgy it doesn't show that, but nonetheless that's what it is, and that's why these um, passages were selected. And what I want to do I can find my sermon, is answer the question very carefully and emphatically um, why Jesus was baptized. Because no doubt some people go, why does Jesus have to be baptized? I'm going to answer that in a way that you can understand very clearly and you can share with other people. With that said, I think that sometimes we forget that Jesus was a Jew and never a Christian. That's, that's just simply the truth. Um, Jesus, um, our Christians follow Jesus Christ. Jesus didn't follow himself. That, that, that's important to understand. Jesus was Jesus a Jew and not Jesus the Christian. He lived as a Jew, died as a Jew, initially uh, living and dying for the sins of Israel. Later, included with that, he lived and died uh, for the sins of the whole world. And this means, uh, and it's not appreciated enough, it seems to me, that the physical, cultural, and geopolitical context um, in which Jesus lived was thoroughly Jewish. <coughs> he is therefore, appropriately, king of the Jews. Right. Now, that, that may sound somewhat obvious, but I think it's not been understood, I think it's been obscured uh, by our cultural biases, or any cultures, 
biases, um, for that matter. In other words, if I were going to be clear about this, I don't think that it's possible to understand Robert E. Lee, General Robert E. Lee, if you take him out of the context of his education at West Point, that he grew up in uh, Virginia, uh, Old Dominion, that that's where his heart rested, and that, of course, he was general uh, of the, the Confederate Army. To try and understand him outside of that context is absolutely ridiculous. In a similar way, to take Jesus out of his context and put him over here and say, now I understand who he is, <coughs> is just simply uh, not a thoughtful thing to do, and it's counterproductive. In fact, it's silly. Not only that, to rest or otherwise uh, remove Jesus from his historical and, and certainly religious context deprives us of fully appreciating and understanding him as well. So, when I say and when we say today that we want to try and figure out uh, the meaning of the baptism of Jesus, we need to uncover the biblical background um, that is his Jewish roots, and really his proto-Jewish roots, in as much as the Judaism didn't exist with King David. And so we want to discuss, discuss that not so much baptism, but rather the process of, of what is called anointing, and specifically the ritual of anointing kings in ancient Israel. For as it turns out, Jesus his baptism is not, I'm quite confident, a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, but rather it's an act of coronation as Messiah. And not only Messiah, the Jewish Messiah. My wife criticizes me for repeating things, but I do sometimes because I want to clearly understood. John is in the desert at the River Jordan baptizing people for the remission of sin. Jesus comes up and is baptized. People therefore go, I don't get this. If Jesus is holy, pure, the Son of God, even God Almighty, if that be, then why in the world does the one who is without sin have to be baptized for the remission of sin? And my response is, he doesn't and he wasn't. This is not a baptism ceremony. This is a coronation ceremony but I get ahead of myself a little bit. Therefore, Drew, uh, viewed this way, the troublesome um, concern of how could Jesus be baptized <coughs> then if he's sinless and pure, how could he submit then to a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of his sin is simply not relevant because it's not true and it's not what happened. So, when Jesus went under the water, held by uh, John the Baptist, and brought back up, that is not a baptism. That is something else. Now, remembering then that Jesus was a Jew, the question I think that it's fair and enjoyable to ask is how were the ancient, or at least how were some of the, <coughs> excuse me, ancient kings of Israel invested into the office of king? In other words, coronated, crowned, if you will. Now, if, if we could determine this, um, then it seems to me we could better grasp the, uh, uh, what's going on then with the uh, so-called baptism of Jesus. Now, what I'd like for, did, for us to do, and those of you who can do this and can get to your scriptures quickly enough, you might want to turn to the second psalm, and that's where I want to begin this morning on understanding the baptism of Jesus Christ. I'm going to read it in its entirety. And uh, this psalm, I might add, um, was used by, and scholars I'm quite confident are correct, and I agree with them, that what would happen is that you, you have these collection of, uh, of psalms, and among 